rewarded for wanting to kill my wife to get the insurance money and live happily after with Susie, my girlfriend. My secret weapons, my sex appeal of course, and my twisted mind. my murder. Oh, but that's marvelous news. You must tell me all about it when we get back. The whole Wilson family, Max, even Grandma, chapter one. And all thanks to you. Oh, I just gave you some technical advice. That's no, all. no, no. You gave me more than that. You gave me an untraceable poison. I won't be getting any rejections on this one. This is gonna make me thriller writer of the year, Max. On my way. I hope towards the ferry. What? Mm -hmm. Edgar, what are you still doing here? Hey, yes, Edgar was definitely me. I have to drop by and tell you the news. Good news? Edgar, you haven't? Yes, I have. The whole Wilson family, even Grandma, in chapter one. Oh, that's marvelous news. Well done, Edgar. Yes, no, Edgar, the fairy. You know, I'm thinking of John Jennifer. Who's Jennifer? And Jennifer is the governess. Now, if he's going to cut that If she's ball, anything like my governor was, drowning would be too good for her. Why don't you boil her law instead? She wouldn't be wrong, no? I was wrong. You were. That's what gave me the idea. Gave you the idea? Hey, hey Edgar, uh, these past couple of days I've seen you out rowing and out the head. Me? Rowing? Why would I be rowing? Well, Edgar, it's nine o'clock. Oh. The fair is here. We'll be back tomorrow. We will talk more about that. Yes. And I have a decapitation. Goodbye, Edgar. <laughs> Thank goodness. Why on earth did 
anything to get rid of him. Besides, I don't think the capitation goes well with our cornflakes. And I was looking forward to breakfast with just the two of us. Oh, darling, you haven't said that actually for a long time. In fact, there are many things you haven't said or done for <laughs> I'm so serious. What? At least I thought of it. Ah. This morning from the bedroom window, I saw a girl with long, dark hair, just like Susie's, sweeping around the head. But of course, it couldn't have been here, right? Of course it couldn't have. Besides, you promised you never see her contact her again. And we promised never to discuss her again. I'm sorry, it was just seeing that girl that brought over. Darling, darling, I had a brief affair. Brief? It went on for a whole year. But it's over now! All in the past! Now come, let's enjoy our breakfast, shall we? <coughs> Did you regret moving here? I mean, it was basically my idea, and you found the promising career. Darling, darling, I was second class chemist in a third class job. Yeah, but the reason for coming here and starting an old vineyard hasn't really worked out. Maybe not yet, but it will, darling. You will see. <laughs> darling, you're always so optimistic. And I actually have every confidence that you will come up with the answer soon. Mm -hmm. Sooner than you think. Darling! Susie! Don't you think you should lift your head out of the context? It could ruin the plan if it's found with ink in your hands. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Darling, we've done it! Not yet. She isn't dead yet. No, but she will be asleep for quite a while. And when she wakes up, she'll be dead. And then in a month or two, the insurance will be through. And I'll be 10,000 pounds richer. We will. And then it's goodbye to this mature vineyard with great potential. Max, let's get it over and done with. OK, you will need the wig. Five or six minutes later, crack appears in the boat. What a blast. And then both Bold and Janet descend gently to the ocean bed, <laughs> which is rather apt because she will still be asleep. Perfect, perfect. You know the weather. The successful murderer has to. It's funny. It's the first time I've consciously thought of it like that. That's what we are, isn't it? Murderers. I prefer lovers. Yoo-hoo! Uh, I don't know. Yoo-hoo! We've got to get here outside. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Who is it? Janet Harrington? Hmm, yes, of course it is. That slim, attractive, blonde. That nice, kind neighbor of yours was very specific. <laughs> And uh, you must be Mr. Harrington. George will be so pleased. Mary Tinkerwell. Be dying to meet you. Uh, we, we haven't met, have we? Uh, not till now. I'll go and fit George. You haven't met him either. She thinks I'm giant. Uh, well, we'll have to play along for the moment. Uh, come on, help me carry her to her bedroom. There's no one will try it. Why should they? They're complete strangers. Anyway, you've been... Are you sure they're letting us stay? Well, George, the prayer has gone and I'll be paying until tomorrow and I'm not sure I am I think they're not going to let us stay out there. It looks like... <laughs> oh, there they are! Janet Harrison and... Uh... Max. How do you do? We've come a long way to find you. And find you 
we have? And do you know you, George? She couldn't be anything but a crypto. A crypto? Uh, a crypto, darling. Remember your maiden name? The name you had before you became my wife? Oh, a crypto. That explains it then. You are all friends of the family. No, we are the family. All the way around all of this made George is good news. Oh. Oh, yes, um, uh, the good news. Well, it, it's a rather long story. Uh, but are you sure you... Oh, you get them with it, George. Uh, fine. In October, or was it November? George. Right. In October, or November, 1924, Jonathan Wilmot Thripton left, left Sadamon of SS Luciana, bound for the port of Buenos Aires, the weather on that day was particularly calm. George, it's a long story. Cut it short. Well, to cut a long story short, Jonathan liked the South America so much that he decided to settle there. That is good news. Terrifically good news. Thank you. Wait, there's more. Oh, I see. He prospered in these foreign climes until three months ago. He tore your jacket? <laughs> <laughs> he died. Oh. He died apparently without an heir. <laughs> but we know differently now, don't we? Of course we know differently. That is supposed to be what we are explaining to them. Like you might. I to am a freedom. Second cousin to dear Jonathan, who I never met, but I'm sure I would have liked. Mr. Harrington, I am a lawyer by profession. The crux of the matter is that dear Jonathan died and left some money, and it could be that you and I might be in contention. Me? Well, you are the only other surviving thrift that would have been able to trace and well, I'll let George explain the legal details. Oh, right. Do you understand anything about the law? <coughs> Not much. Well, allow me to leave. There are two possible beneficiaries here. Both of which have an equal claim to the inheritance. And, should they foolishly come into conflict, they could both lose a great deal of time and money. <coughs> How much did he leave? Hundreds? Thousands? Tens of thousands? Well, George? Um, uh, millions. Millions? Millions? Pounds of dollars? Dollars. Millions of dollars? <laughs> Millions! Enough for everybody! So we can do a deal. Second cousin. Uh, what? <laughs> Your wife's relationship. Dear cousin Jonathan. Second cousin. Yes. And my wife's relationship? Well, uh, approximately <laughs> first. Approximately! Uh, the, uh, the, the intricacies of the law, a claim such as this, it could take months, years even, to definitely prove. Well, I think we can't speed up the process, George. Huh? Darling, I seem to remember lots of dusty old documents relating to you and your family tucked away somewhere. Worth a look, don't you think, George? Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, you will obviously have to stay there. What? Of course they will, darling. You know there is no fair until tomorrow. You will stay the night. Ah, uh, yes, uh, we will. Uh, the, the one night. Two. Uh, the most. Excellent. There is a bed made up in there. That is very kind of you, but as my head wasn't just the one night. Of course, of course. I do hope you find those documents, Mr. Hatton. I'm sure we shall. I mean, it would be awful if they were lost. No fear of that. And don't forget, we'll be close at hand if you wish to go south. George, if she wakes up. She isn't going to wake up. Surely now that Just I... trust me, darling. Okay, let's go and get these damn documents then. There aren't any documents. But did you see his reaction when I told him there were? I'd wager they don't have a legal leg to stand on, and they know it. They are here to try and take you off your inheritance. But Max, it's Janet's inheritance. Yes, exactly. But as far as they are concerned, you are Janet. 
Trust me, darling, I now have a new plan. A better plan. <laughs> Look how neatly I swapped the passport pictures in this passport. Right down to new plastic and an official stamp. You darken giant's hair up, don't you? Yes, and in this one, I've lightened your hair up. So now she looks like you, about as much as anyone expects from a passport photo. Alright, so I am using her passport and she is using mine. What next? We go ahead as planned. Put here in the boat, but with your passport alongside, and Susie Stevens is officially dead. But you, Janet Harrington, I rest with fortune. And your loving husband, me, live happily ever after. Terrific, Max. That's better than we had before. Many millions better. And not a flaw in the whole plan. Max. The drug must have gone off. What is your sugar? Uh, Keep us and get me the sugar bowl. Max, the cup of tea. Yes, darling, just coming. You had a fall, darling. You slipped on the rug. Good, good evening, Mrs. Harrington. We have decided to go for a stroll around the island. We'll be back for dinner. Oh, it's all right. I've got here under again. Had to force fit here. Any sign of our guests? They have just gone out for a walk. Good. We'll get on with dying Janet's hair dark, and we'll lighten yours too while we're about it. The hair colors. Quickly! Yes. Run! Hello. Is my uh, Mr. Harrington around? He he's busy dying. What? Ah, uh, time to get on with whatever he is busy at. That's a pity. I want to tell him I know all about the murder. Oh. You didn't know? How could you know? You haven't done it yet. You? But I'm the one who's writing the book. It'll be my name on the cover, Edgar Chambers. Oh, you're his neighbor. That's right. And you know his wife too? Yes. Mister. Don't go disturbing him if he's busy. Edgar, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be at the mainland until uh, tomorrow? Well, have a bit of luck. Make a young couple to the way to here and then you drop me off the road. Great, Edgar, great. Um, by the way, who are you? Me? I am a... Uh... Tell you who I am, darling! A complete stranger. Yes, uh, Susie Stevens. It's something to do with theater. It calls everyone darling. Don't you, darling? Oh, <laughs> now you got me to it. <laughs> uh, how did you get here? She wrote. Road? Road. Yes, of course. How else could you have got here? She wrote. To the wrong island. Oh, the wrong island. <laughs> yes, it's a simple enough mistake, okay? She had them up upside down. And now she's in the rowing back. Am I? Yes. Now, before the light fades. And while Edgar over here is still here to witness your departure. But Max. Yes, Miss Stevens. All that remains to be seen is if the coast is clear. There is no sign of them. Them? Uh, the dark cloud Cyrus Nimbus formation that often appears before a storm. Yes, Miss Stevens, here's your passport. Take it and run to the boat now. But Max! No, 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 no. Those are the same clouds are not visible yet. But might be upon us any minute now. Now take it and run to the boat. Uh, don't you think one of us should see her off safely? What? Shouldn't I at least watch her until she's out of sight? Why would you want to do that? I hardly know the girl. The dark clouds, the merciless sea. If she flounders, it won't be offshore. I no, it will be in the open sea, around the headland. Well, I still think I should go. I think I got some rum, and I think I'll join you. Yes, I've never known you refuse a drink. Um, you 
Which is good, that map upside down again. <laughs> then she rolls straight back here, and we've got nothing to worry about. Cheers. You know, there's definitely a Muslim Max. You don't have to be psychic to know this. I knew as soon as I saw this couple this morning, her with her widow's weeds, him with his morning patch, and asking for... Ah, you mean uh, them? Yes. I don't mean to fry. <coughs> Death is a family affair. But they were bears of bad news, weren't they? Yes. A cousin of Janet's died. Oh my god. Hysterical with grief, was she? You had to sedate her? Yes, Edgar. I've just heard the sad news. Sad news? Poor Miss Harrington. She has had a fatal accident. Um, the, the death of her cousin. Who's your first cousin? This, by the way, is her second cousin, Mary Tickerwell, <laughs> and her husband, George. Edgar Chambers. Can I offer you to a drink? Well, I wouldn't refuse. That's kind of don't you dare, George. You know what drink does to you. You have to keep a clear head. After all, you have things to discuss with Mr. Harrington. Things? Dealings? Right. Uh, my wife and I have thought that uh, you might have come to your senses. I want to talk. To talk a deal. <laughs> a deal? <laughs> Nothing could be further from my mind. A deal? What deal? Hey, Edgar! What are you still doing here? Aren't you supposed to be home, working on how to dispose of your murder victims? What? Yes, Edgar. The whole world is waiting for the secret burial of the Wilson family. Incineration. Incineration? Yes, I've decided to burn them, so it's much cleaner. Yes, uh, Edgar over here, right? Thrillers. Ah. Now, go on, Edgar, while it's still fresh in your mind. You're right, Max. I shall not be that person. Of course. Nothing, nothing shall start between me and my craft, except for us. Goodbye, Edgar. I'm still worried about that girl in the book. <coughs> of course you are. I can see your problem. Because if she's in the boat, or the water, it rules out incineration. <laughs> Come on, I'll take you back to your place. We'll have a drink or two, and sort it all out. You made yourselves at home. Extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. You have to keep a clear head, George. Why? She made us play us along, seeking an advantage. Yes, my dear. Technically, he already has that. And to quote the vernacular, he has us by the short and curlies. Yes, but if we could prove Mrs. Harrington was an imposter or something? What? That is utterly ridiculous. These things happen in books all the time, but never in real life. But if she were dead? But if we could prove she was dead? Even more ridiculous. Last time we saw her, she seemed in the most excellent of health. But if she were dead, George, wouldn't that be great for all of us? <laughs> Certainly for you and I, but not for her. Anyway, it's mere conjecture, and it isn't going to happen. It most certainly is. Uh, what? Janet Harrington is going to die. Uh, right, that's what I said. Hmm. Yes, because we are going to kill her. We? Well, to be more specific, you are going to kill her. <laughs> You, you can't be serious. Extreme circumstances, George. Call for extreme measures. Mary? Mary, look at me. Murder? But how? Oh, for years, George. You have borne me countless others with beastly details of your military service. Now is the time to turn all that training into a more practical use. But Mary, we only attacked sandbags. Well, now you can deal with the real thing. Janet Harrington, I want her dead. I need her dead. And by George, George, I'll have her dead. I don't want to do it, Mary. George, I've given you the best years of my life. <laughs> and when I ask you to do one simple little murder, <laughs> all you can do is to make excuses. I don't think I can do it. Of course you
you can, you must. And now is the best possible time to do it. She is asleep up there and he isn't back yet. The weak link. That's the weak link. He may come back. Of course he'll come back. He lives here. Oh, you saw him. He and the runner are probably in a drunken state. There is no risk as long as you do it now. I'll keep a look up. Someone will suspect. Well, we are going to arrange a scene so that it looks a perfectly normal accident. <coughs> Mary, it's not that I don't love you. <laughs> what do you need, George Dingwell, is some moral courage. Come. Help. Susie, 
Susie! 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 A couple of minutes and the boat will be flooded! Janet! towards the patio, while you casually go about making a cup of coffee. Then, you will look at the general direction of the body and scream, ah! drawing my attention. Oh, very well done, here. But there's no body. No, George! Why did you scream then? Where is it gone? <laughs> Where is it gone? I don't believe this. It's a nightmare. It's been stolen. Oh, good morning. You are up early. Uh, we don't want to visit her. No, Russ. You can stay another day if you want. I know Janet would be pleased. Oh, darling, just talking about you. Good morning, George. Mary, I hope you slept well. Oh, I think I owe you an apology about my last night's behavior. I wasn't really myself, you know. Sad death of dear Uncle Jonathan and all that. But once that's about you leaving, I wouldn't hear of it. Besides, we didn't get the chance to properly meet. Although, you and I have been for, haven't we? Have we? Oh, I don't expect you to remember. I was just a child at that time. At Great Aunt Jessica's funeral? Oh, you are now the same person. And well, so long ago, there's bound to be some difference. Uh, your hair. Oh, that's what's been bothering me. Yes, I cried last night. I'm a creature of sudden impulse, and as an heiress who soon became a great fortune, I will change my whole personality. Come along, darling. I think it's time for our jog. Our what? Darling, we don't want you going the same way as dear cousin Jonathan, do we? But no, 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 no. We've got to keep you fit, keep you alive and well. Jogging is the solution. <laughs> oh, darling, I know I can be a bit slow on the uptake, and I don't want to press the point, but I'm pretty sure that that wasn't the woman I killed last night. George! You're right, my dear. It was the same woman. Of course it wasn't the same woman. <sighs> Thank goodness. And I thought it was the wrong. Well, that's it then. That's it? <coughs> what? The mystery is solved. It wasn't the wrong. George, that woman is not Janet Hank. We murdered the real Janet Hank on last night. You did. Oh, thank goodness. I thought it must have all been just a terrible dream. Obviously, he did come back. <coughs> found the body. Thought she had had a fatal accident. Oh. Fell down the stairs, broke her neck. Our plan worked, George. It worked. That's perfect. Can we go home now? George, we cannot go home. Don't you see? We killed his, his wife. He has hidden the body and found another one. <laughs> he has probably got his way with women then. George, the wife he has now is not his wife. We are back in charge of the situation. Oh, yes. I'm beginning to get your drift. We can nail them for bigamy. <laughs> if the wife he has now is not his wife, then what is she? Hmm. Oh, I'm finally getting through to you, George. 
And if we can prove the imposter is actually an imposter, we've got them by sorting Hairlit! Hmm, not quite the, the weak link. What weak link? At this point, we cannot prove that the wife he has now is not his real wife. What do we do? If uh, we could produce an independent witness... Hello, Max around? He's a uh, jogging. Jogging? It's not like Max without an exercise. <laughs> Isn't his wife half of the either? Oh, Janet? She's quite athletic. Does a lot of rowing. Oh, you know Mrs. Harrington quite well then. Yes, we've been neighbors for three years. Hmm. If you've been neighbors for three years, you must know Mrs. Harrington awfully well. Uh, so, yes. if she came back here jogging, you could recognize her straight away. Uh, um, I don't know. Not, too, not sure I'd recognize my own reflection this morning. Unless I have had some of this inside. Hmm. <sighs> That's better. Tell Max I won't see him for a day or two. Determined to get on with the foot. Oh, but you can't leave now. Can't he, George? Uh, of course he can. Why not? The independent witness, George. What? Ah. Oh, a case we were discussing before you arrived. Yes, yes my husband is a lawyer, you know. And a lawyer? What? Criminal. Criminal. Oh, the murder trial she has attended. Uh, murder? Yes, uh, George, I am sure Mrs. Uh, Lynn is being a thriller writer. My benefit from the time with you until the harm to the park. Yes. Oh, right. Yes, Mr. Chambers. I have indeed been involved with murder. Hmm. When did it happen? A long time ago. Oh. Could you tell me where? Uh... Far away from here, in the copy desk. All the Harringtons are returning, and I think someone is in for a big shock. Oh. oh, Edgar, Max, I didn't expect to see you up and about so early. I bet you did. Uh, yes, glad I did. Came to borrow some books. Uh, sorry, books. <laughs> You didn't tell me, Jones. Uh, was a lawyer. He's been giving me some tips on her. Great, Edgar, that's great. <laughs> God, who's this then? Come on, Max. Aren't you going to introduce me? Yes, Mr. Harrington, go ahead and introduce her. Come on, Edgar, do you like them or don't you? Janet, whatever color you may dye your hair, will always be the same lovable hue. I didn't get a chance to thank you. No, I, I should thank you, compared to what you and Max have done for me over the past few years. But I've got to be the Oh, God, it's your wife, right? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I think she's gonna be okay. Uh, she'll lie down for a while. She'll get the fixed up. Come on, darling. I think you should lie down for a while. And I think I may join you. You know, she has to recite. Why? Just a moment ago, she predicted that someone was in for a big shot. Well, amazing. See ya. Goodbye, Edgar. Bye. Darling, you were magnificent. Did, you, did I do well? You did exactly as I wanted you to do. I'm still so very confused. I slipped the stairs and fell? Yes, and passed out completely. And how did I slip? Uh, oh, you slipped on the rug, darling. You see, the rug. Okay, and then you carried me out to the bedroom? What else could I do? There is no food up here, and the ferry had gone. Anyway, you were breathing normally, and then thankfully, you slept very peacefully. Yes, that's actually the thing I do remember, sleeping for a very long time. Uh, it wasn't that long, about an hour or so. Then you got up and seemed fully recovered. And then, they, George and Mary Tickle arrived? Yes, 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 and they told you about the will and your cousin's death and all that. Well, that's the funny, I can swear mm -hmm. I never met them before in my life. Well, darling, you did meet them. And I guess you'll have to take my word for it. Okay, and then what happened? But I can only assume that you were suffering from uh, delayed concussion. That, together with the shock of the news. Anyway, as soon as you started behaving irrationally, dashing off to dye your hair, I knew I had to adopt this plan. Plan? Yes, darling, a cover-up plan. But what are you covering up? I'm doing it for you, darling. There are a couple of opportunists and they are here to try and cheat you of your inheritance. 
any more of your unusual behavior and they bring an insanity suit. I'm not insane. I know that, darling. But yesterday you looked like one and I had to protect you. Oh, Max, you take such a good care of me. Darling, you're worth it. Complex. What? I, I, I remember. I was sitting over here and then a giant plate of complex came up and hit me. Oh, Max, I'm not driving my mind. <laughs> no, darling. A temporary amnesia, probably. I suppose it may all come back. Yes, but I shouldn't push it. These things take time. Now, I think I should put you back for a while. No, I don't want to have those dreams again. What dreams? It's all mixed up. I am locked in that room up there. That's not dream. I did lock you in. Why? Because I didn't want to fall down the stairs again, darling. And what about the rowing? The rowing? I was in a boat, and then water started to Oh, fall. wait, wait, wait. You don't think I'd let you go out rowing on your own, do you? No, 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 darling. You are far I too precious for me. I saw her, too. Susie Stevens. She was in my dream, but yet it wasn't her. Your hair was different. No, don't worry, darling. I promise you, neither you nor I will ever see Susie Stevens again. I'm certain I saw a couple of painkillers around here. George! I have a crushing headache! Have you I got know, it? I know, darling, I know. Wait. Uh. George! Yes, dear. I think I've got it. I'm not going to eat a passport. No, my dear, you're not going to eat it. Look, right here and here. See? Yes, George. I never thought I would say something like that, but I'm almost proud of you. We've got them, dear. We've got them by. You know what we've got them by. We have. We have. Um, uh, the thing I know how to do best? Call them while the iron's hot. Go on. Mr. Harrington? Mr. Harrington! Shh. You'll wake my wife. Oh, come now. I didn't call out enough to wake the dead. What? Come down here, Mr. Harrington. There is something we wish to discuss with you. Look, can't it wait until... Uh... It can't wait enough. Millions of dollars. Well, what is it? We know what you're up to, Mr. Harrington. <laughs> up to? We know that the wife you have now is not your real wife. <laughs> She's an imposter. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I think I recognize my own wife. And even if I didn't, there are witnesses, there are documents, there are <laughs> witnesses. Like that writer fellow you bribed to lie to us. <laughs> Hilarious documents. Like this. Janet's passport. Yes. That's what it says here. Janet Harrington. But I drew your attention particularly to the photograph. <laughs> the photograph? Well, George, you know what these passport photos are. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not referring to the likeness itself. But to the fact that I'm close scrutiny, it is quite obvious that this password has been tampered with. This photo has been substituted. What's wrong, Mr. Hampton? Can't you offer no words to your defense? No explanation? I think I can. Last night, your wife... Your real wife? Lay dead beneath these stairs. Obviously, there is out of a tragic we found her, Mr. Harrington. And we immediately set off to find her. We wandered across the island and uh, came through, sir. 
but here, to find that the body was gone. Was it in church? Yes, quite. And when you came back? And introduced a complete stranger as your wife. We realized that all was not as it seemed. But the discovery of this passport has solved everything. Particularly for us. I'm now the only surviving claimant. Come on, towards And all this over a passport. If you would like, we could submit the passport to the proper authorities. But I'm warning you. They will carry out forensic tests, and the truth, the whole truth, will out. What do you want? Nothing much. Just sign this. What is this? A full admission of your duplicity. Now sign, or face the consequences of full inquiry. Thank you. Now that I have this, I'm sure that neither you nor that woman up there, whoever she is, <laughs> will have any further claims to the inheritance. George, you are wonderful. Yes, dear. I rather think I was. What would you like to do then? Shall we take a walk around the island? Who knows? You may even be tempted into buying it. <laughs> or would you rather the south of France? Almost count it! And down you do! Ah. Susie? Susie, you're alive? And I'm cold. And wet again. And my neck hurts. And my hair is all blonde. Oh, Max! Susie, what happened? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's so like a terrible nightmare. I remember rowing. Yes, I was in a boat. And it was sinking. Water flooding in through the bank hole. That is what must have woken me up. And then I was dreaming. And then I must have passed out again. I woke up on the beach. Cold. And my head hurts. And my neck hurts. And we were going to throw Janet. Where is Janet? Bed. What? The ocean bed. We did it then? Yes. I helped you carry her out. Yes. And then I came back here. But you'd have gone. I can tell you, darling, I was desperately worried. I scoured the whole island for you. But I couldn't find you. I did come back here. And they, they were calling me. They were calling Janet Harrington. And then... And she hit me with, with a coconut. She hit you? Mary Ticklewell. And then I don't remember anyone until <laughs> he was behind me. His hands around my neck and I couldn't shout or move. And then there was a terrible crash. Your neck? No, no, I think it must have been his watch. I woke up with this in my hand. <laughs> well, it's a watch of some kind. But look at this, it has initials on it, GT. So it wasn't an accident. Max, they tried to murder me. Wonderful. What? That you survived, my love. <laughs> Max, you're not going to let them get away without you. Of course not. I'm going to make them pay. How? Show me that watch again. Now, you hold on to that tightly. It's vital evidence. But what are you going to do? She was behind you, you say? Yes. His hands around your neck? Yes. And you felt them tighten? I'm sorry, my love. You have to understand, I really did love you. But we're talking about millions of dollars. Millions. <laughs>
the treatment is lots of fluids and lots of rest. Now drink it all down and then lots of rest. You must have lost it somewhere in the house. I hope so. That watch was given to me by my late father. All right. It's very dear to me. We'll have a look for it. <laughs> right. Ah! Oh, good. You found it. Oh, good. George! It's not the same woman. Really? Oh, don't start that again, Mary. George, but hair is brown, blonde. <laughs> She's dead! Of course, darling. After all, I killed her. I would say that qualifies as a confession, George! George, don't say anything until you see the lawyer! But I am a lawyer! Don't do something! Not much to do, I'm afraid. Well, George, you being a lawyer and all that, you'd know when to settle. But let me give you the full picture first, George. She lies dead beneath the stairs with a watch on her hand bearing the initials G.T. George, how could you be so careless? It's criminal! Uh, yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> and I should submit the watch to the proper authorities. But where is the profit in that, George? The truth coming out? The whole truth? No, 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 no. That isn't going to make either of us any good. Besides, millions of dollars make for an awfully big pie. A deal? Fifty-fifty? Reluctantly, yes. Fifty-fifty. Agreed. And you take your watch back. Thank you. At least uh, one feels like he's dealing with a gentleman. Yes, all right, he's a gentleman, but should we get back uh, to the business in hand? Yes, you're right. There are two more rowing boats on the bay. What about your accomplice? The one posing as your wife? Oops. Supposing she wakes Don't up worry about that. I gave her a spoonful of this concoction of my own. Oh. She'll sleep for a while yet. Good thinking. Now, we should carry her down to the bay. Whoop! She has to help too. Me? Of course. Then we're all accomplices, right, George? <laughs> right, my dear. Okay. It is done! And the deed is done! And done well! And more to the point! Done together! Jovius! I feel the spirit of brotherly togetherness! And speaking of spirits, didn't you mention a non Napoleon brandy? I certainly did. But I think we should all go and wash our hands first. And I'll meet you down here by the decanter in a few minutes. Edgar, now what does this have to do with uh, I read over I read over back chapter one and even you who did it. I rushed over here, but you were busy. 
all of you were busy disposing of bodies, clearing evidence. So I watched and listened, and here I am with a deal of my own. I want half. Half? He's or a half of bones. Silly woman. Half of it all, of course. No, we couldn't agree to that. Could we? I'm afraid we may have to. Well, Edgar, you have got us on the hoop. And personally, I'm far too sensitive to carry on such a conversation with uh, Susie lying there. So why don't you get rid of the body? And then we can talk about business. There's nothing to talk about. I'm but... sure about that, Edgar. Let me give you a hand. <laughs> Don't bother, I'm afraid. <laughs> He's right. There's nothing to talk about. It's the short and curlies again. Maybe not yet. Keep smiling, Doc. Why? What about? I lace the rum with this stuff to make him sleep. Oh. We then take care of Susie's body, the evidence. And then, sleep away the Buenos Aires, pick up our million. Millions, darling! Millions! That's long enough. Well, Edgar, you were right. And indeed, you were absolutely right when you said we had no alternative but to comply with your demand. I told you. But I do hope this isn't going to mean the end of our friendship. Well, after I get my half, I won't be doing it. <laughs> of course not. But what do you say, Edgar? <laughs> One last drink together to show there's no hard feelings. That's very good of you, Max. I'll drink to that. Would you like a drink as well? Partners in crime and all! <laughs> no, 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 no! A brandy for you, I thought! Oh, uh, I'd oh. rather have a brandy too! Edgar, don't be excessive! <coughs> That's a perfectly good round you're holding! Drink it, and then you can have some brandy! Ooh. Cheers! I don't know, this rum tastes funny. Sweet, Edgar, it tastes sweet. It should, but it tastes salty. Edgar, that's the best rum money can buy. And to my way of thinking, it's an absolute knockout. <laughs> I have to sit down. <laughs> Millionaire, the thought goes to my legs. And I'm ready for that now. What's wrong? Did you give him enough? Anymore, and you have made it the glass. Salt. It's salt! Salt? Yes, my darling. It is salt. It has always been salt. Right from the moment I went down to the kitchen and saw you mix some stuff. Hello, Edgar. If only you hadn't been Darling, I can explain. I really wish you wouldn't call me that, Max. I am not your darling. In fact, I knew I wasn't your darling when I saw Susan Stevens hanging around the island and dressed up as me and glowing. That's when I began to get really boring in me. So, the salt. As soon as you finished mixing the drag, I swapped it with salt. And then I knew that whenever I tasted salt, I had to pretend to go to sleep. And the things that I heard and saw through half-closed lids. I was also scared, though. Although I don't know what frightened me the most. When you put me to that boat and it started to sink. Or when you came back to rescue me. I think the second. So, the salt. <coughs> Edgar, if you only hadn't been. You wouldn't have been told this out of, you know, Max, 
here and tried to drag you too. <laughs> but you see, it wasn't a drag at all because I swapped the real drag and put it where? Into the brand. The brand! Of course, the brandy. I knew you were planning to drink it in order to celebrate my efforts. How much did you put in it? <laughs> All of it. All of it. Oh, we we'll probably sleep for a week or even longer. <laughs> I only needed the day the most. Well done, Jess. You get something right at last. Although you got something wrong. Me wrong. I love you, Max. I really do. Darling. I love you too! Nonsense. You have money, it's trigger, and yourself! Not necessarily in that order. What are you going to do? I'm gonna mm. row myself back to the mainland, catch the first plane to Buenos Aires, pick up my millions. <laughs> and... <laughs> it won't work! Because as soon as they see your passport, that it's been tampered with! <laughs> Silly boy! I lost my passport. They'll be so kind to provide me with a new one. Especially when they found out how rich I am. George! Do something! <laughs> I don't think there's much left to do. I mean, she seems to have it all so perfectly worked out. That's right. Cheers. Oh, and I forgot to mention. Before I go to the plane, I shall call the police anonymously and tell them you are here. What? But we'll still be dead to the world. Oh, exactly. They'll have days to sit and look at you, listen to your snoring, smell the brandy, then find Susan Sarkis and take you to your body. And do you know what conclusion they come up to? That you all drunk as mad at Susan Stevens. This won't work. They'll look for you. Extradite you from Buenos Aires. Oh, don't be naive, Edgar. Rich people don't get extradited. Especially not from Buenos Aires. The case will go on for years. While all of you perish in jail. So, adios, muchachos. <laughs> What are you doing down? What are you talking about? I can't even bloody stand. Oh, my eyes are closing. And I see goats. Lots and lots of goats. We have to resign ourselves that we are going to sleep. And when we wake up, the first thing we'll see is handcuffs. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs>